just to minimize the dust that actually gets into the museum area. So inshallah the sisters uh, go first. You guys can sit here, sit there as you wish. Yes, yeah, sit. They're gonna serve you dates, coffee. How you guys like the coffee? Not bad. Nice. How do you like it? <laughs> Can I have it again? My name is Ahmed. Inshallah, I'll be showing you the models we have here. If you have any questions, you can ask. Okay. Bismillah wa salatu salam ala Rasulillah. This model here is for the Hijra, the migration of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Mecca to Mukarrama to Al Madina Al Munawwara. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in his house when the disbelievers of Quraysh wanted to kill him. You know, they came and they just waited outside of his house, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, they didn't want to break into his house. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he went past them. They couldn't see him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know why? Because he was reciting, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّةً وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدَّةً You know, we have made a barrier before them and a barrier behind them. And that's why they couldn't see an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then uh, it is also reported that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa threw sand at them and that's why they fell asleep. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made his way to Abu Bakr's house and both of them headed south. You know they went to the cave of Thor. Thor is in the south but Medina is in the north. And Nabi Bakr knew that the search would be on the northern side of the city. You know they wanted to fool the disbelievers and that is why they went to the southern side. Subhanallah, the disbelievers of course did not find him in his house. And that is why they set a prize of 100 camels on the head of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, 100 camels back then is like 100 cars now. So that, that's a lot of money. And that is why many, many trackers were after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best one, Suraqa, followed him to the cave. You know, Suraqa, when he saw the spider web and the pigeons there, he couldn't believe that someone was hiding inside. You know, a web is there and it isn't broken. Obviously, nobody, no one has been there. So when he saw that web over the entrance, he immediately went back to Mecca al mukarrama For Nabi Abu Bakr, they stayed in the cave for three days. Asma, Abu Bakr's daughter, was going to provide food and water for them. Okay? Subhanallah, it is reported that Abu Bakr anhu got into the cave first. Okay? So he got into the cave first. He cleaned it up, anhu, and then he saw holes in the cave. So he took off his garment, he cut it into small pieces, and then he filled the holes, anhu. And then he asked the Nabi Sallallahu to come in. So the Nabi came in and he placed his, he placed his head on the thigh of Bakr radiallahu There was one hole that Abu Bakr did not have garment for. So he stuck his foot upon it, subhanAllah. And the snake that was in that hole bit Abu Bakr radiallahu Yeah, Abu Bakr radiallahu didn't want to disturb the Prophet Sallallahu He didn't want to wake him up. So he was going through that pain, radiallahu And subhanAllah, tears began to flow down his cheeks, radiallahu they fell on the cheeks of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet saw what Abu Bakr was going through. He took his slave وسلم, and placed it upon the foot of Bakr Radulano. And it was as though that he hadn't been bitten by a snake, subhanAllah. And then they started their journey to Al-Madir Munawara. Now let me show you something. This one here was the main route at that time. You know, the people used to call it the trade route. Can you see the lights? Yeah, okay. So this one here was the main route at that time. The one that the people used to take to Al Medina. They used to call it the trade route or the caravan route. For Nabi Abu Bakr, they did not take it because of the bounty. You know, they knew that the disbelievers were after them. That is why they took another route along the coast, you know, the Red Sea. They took Al Hijra route. Look at it. So on the left here, we have Al Hijra route. And on the right, we have the business route. You know, Al Hijra route was mountainous and arduous, and that is why. It took them 10 to 12 days to arrive in Medina. 
it would have taken them around six days if they had taken the business route. But they took an Hijra route and that's why it took them 10 to 12 days to arrive in Al Medina Munawwara. You know, along the way to Al Medina, there are many, many stories, mashallah. Some of these stories are authentic and some of them are not. But the most famous ones are these two. You see the story of Umm Ma'bad and you see the crown and the bracelets, Suraq bin Malik. Umm Ma'bad, subhanAllah, was a very generous lady. You know, whoever would pass by her tent, she would feed them, you know, take care of them, subhanAllah. Nabi Sallallahu came to her tent asking for some food. And because that was a year of famine, Umm Ma'bad said, I, you know, she, she didn't have anything. She said, I don't have anything. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a goat in the corner. He said, what about the goat? She said, this goat is too weak. There is no milk in it. He said, can I milk it? She said, go ahead, you can do this. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed to Allah. He said, oh Allah bless the goat of Umm Abed. He said, Bismillah, and then he started touching the goat. Like he wiped over the other, and it filled with milk, SubhanAllah. And then he asked for a big container, not a small one, a big one. He filled it up, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he gave it to Umm Abed first. He wanted her to drink first. And then he gave his companions. The Prophet was the last one to drink. And then he said, the master or the Lord of the people is their servant, SubhanAllah. And then he refilled the container and gave it back to Umm Abed before leaving the tent. So when Umm Ma'bad came back, you know, when he saw that milk, he said, there wasn't anything one I left. Like, where did you get it from? She said, by Allah, a blessed man was in our tent. He said, okay, describe him to me. Subhanallah, she described the Nabi to her husband. You know, the husband had never seen a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But once he had, once he heard, sorry, once he heard the description, he said, that must be Muhammad, the one whom the people of Quraysh are pursuing. If I meet him, I will pledge allegiance to him and I will become a Muslim. It is reported that Umm Ma'bad and her husband became Muslims a few years later, subhanAllah. You see the crown and the bracelets? That valley is called Al-Juhfa. Suraqa, the best tracker at that time, found a Nabi Nabakr al-Siddiq in that valley, subhanAllah. You know Suraqa, he didn't have any personal issues with the Nabi, no Bakr. He was just a bounty hunter. He just wanted that bounty. Suraqa, subhanAllah, narrated the story. He said, I found them and I could see them. You know, I could see them. So I was trying to get closer. I got very close to where I could hear Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reciting the Quran. See how close he was? He could hear the recitation of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I drew my spear and I aimed it at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he was, when I was thinking about throwing it, like at that moment, all of a sudden the front legs of my horse started sinking into the ground. He said, I backed up my horse. I wanted to do it again. And again, the legs sunk into the ground. He said, I wanted to do it for the third time, and again it happened. And that's when I knew that Muhammad was a true prophet. I knew that something was stopping me. And that is why I started screaming out. Like, oh Muhammad, stop. Please stop. And Nabi al stopped. And then Suraqa made his way to the prophet. He told the Nabi that the people of Quraysh had put a price on his head, you know, 100 camels. And Nabi told Suraqa not to tell anyone. And in return, the Nabi promised him that he would be given the crown and the bracelets of Kisra. You know Kisra? The king of Persia. For Suraqa, that was something hard to believe because Persia was one of the richest and the strongest countries. Around 16 years later, after the Sabbath had conquered Persia, the crown and the bracelets were given to Suraqa by Umar bin Khattab himself. Subhanallah. It is, uh, you know, the second thing we have here are these volcanoes. You see them? See the volcanoes? Uh, they are they are 16 kilometers out of Al-Medina. You know, they used to erupt before the birth of the Nabi, you know, way before his birth, even before the Jewish tribes came to Al-Medina Munawwara. Okay? Yeah, and uh, because of that, we have the volcanic tracks here around the city. Have you seen that? You know, the black stones, the black rocks, you know, the volcanic rocks? Shall we see that together? These volcanoes are still there, but they are inactive, alhamdulillah. The last eruption was in 1256, around 800 years ago. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that judgment day will not be established until a great fire comes out from Hijaz, which illuminates the city of Busra. You know Busra? Busra is in Syria. This is Hijaz. I mean, what kind of light is that? Because around 1500 kilometers in between Hijaz and Syria. Around 800 years ago, a huge light came out of those mountains. You know, that was the last eruption. That was the last eruption. So those volcanoes erupted, a huge light came out, and subhanAllah, the light was very strong, so much so it illuminated the city of Busra. 
and the light lasted for 22 days. It is one of the signs of the judgment, you know, the minor ones, and it already happened 800 years ago. You know, the people at that time thought it was the judgment day, by the way. Yeah, it was very, very scary, subhanAllah. Allah knows best. So any question about the volcanoes or the Hijra route? No? So now we can move on and see the next model, inshallah. Bismillah. Because that's where the Sahabas were asking the Nabi to stay in their houses. The Nabi didn't have a house in the Medina. So that was a great opportunity. I mean, everyone wanted to have him وسلم, in their houses. So they were like, Ya Rasulullah, come to my house. Ya Rasulullah, stay in my house. And Nabi said, when my camel sits, they will be my house. So the Sahabas were following the Prophet's camel, trying to stop it. And Nabi said, leave the camel. The camel is being commanded by Allah. The camel knows where to stop. So the Prophet's camel took all the way to the center. She sat right there and that's where he said, this is my house, this is my masjid. So that's Al-Masjid Nabi Sharif. It is the second masjid in Islam. Shall we talk about it? See the big mountain over there? That's Uhud. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we love Uhud and Uhud loves us. And that is why many people call him a companion, you know, a sahabi. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we love him and he loves us. SubhanAllah, Nabi said, Uhud is one of the mountains of Al-Jannah. So that mountain will be in Jannah, inshallah. And that's why the people call it that way. But now these two here are combined. And Al-Baqiyah is five times bigger. It is very big. You know, whoever dies in Medina goes to Baqiyah. It doesn't matter, locals, foreigners, everyone. That is why we have so many janazas in the Haram. Did you notice that? We almost have janazas after every salah. Because whoever dies in Medina goes to Baqiyah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whosoever is able to die in Medina, so let him die there, for indeed I will intercede for those who die in Medina. And he said about the people of Al-Baqiyah, when the judgment day comes, 75,000 of the people of Al-Baqiyah will be shining like full moon. And they will enter into Jannah without reckoning. And that is why everyone wants to be buried in Al-Baqiyah, subhanAllah. Okay? So any question about that? No, 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 Nabi Sallallahu is the one who made it. Yeah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi made it, that's true. It wasn't there before he slept. Was not there. Yeah. Are, are there any graveyards beside the Baqiyah or just the Baqiyah? Now or b back then? Like no, now, no, now only we have Baqiyah. We have another graveyard in, very close to Jabal Uhud, but they, they rarely use that one. Yeah, not always. But for this one here, you see, we have many janazas in the Haram because everyone goes to Baqiyah. I mean, like, uh, they have like a, a recycling system. You know, like every. I'm not sure how many years it takes, but it takes the, bo the body a few years to decompose. Yes, right. Nothing won't be there, not even the bones. So they, what they do, they just open the grave and use it, reuse it, sorry, put another body in there, and that's it. But for the graves of the wives, of the poverty, his companions, they're untouched, never been reused. Yeah, never been reused. But for, for the rest, people reuse that. And sometimes the body is intact. That happens. No, no, if the body is intact, if the body is there, they just put another, sorry, put a, uh, a mark. Like this grave cannot be reused. Yeah, they never use that as well. Yeah, no, no, no. They never use it because the body is there. They can't take it out of Baqiya. So you just leave it there. Like this grave, put a, a little mark. You know, people who work at Baqiya, you know, know these, yeah, these markings, yeah. So they just put a little mark in there. You know, some people say not even the body is there. Even the smell of the body is good. Yes. SubhanAllah. Sharif today, that's how it was 1400 years ago. See, the Sahabas made it 35. Yeah, the Sahabas made it 35 meters by 30 meters. Come, come here, man, no problem. Yeah. 35 meters by 30 meters. The masjid had two roofs or two sections. The big one, that one was for Salah. The people used to pray towards Masjid Al Aqsa. Masjid Al Aqsa is this way. The one at the back here was for Ashab al Sufa, you know them? Ashab al Sufa were poor and companions, poor Sahabas. You know, they had given up their homes, their families just to be with the Nabi in Medina. So when they came to Medina, they didn't have anything. And that is why they used to live in the masjid, like Abu Huraira, you know, Bilal bin Rabaha, Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Yeah, they used to live in the masjid. In the second year of the Hijrah, the Nabi وسلم, was told to change the direction of the Qibla to Mecca. Mecca, subhanAllah, is in the south, and Palestine is in the north. He did not rebuild the masjid, he just, he just switched, you know, the roofs, like he changed the roofs. Yeah, the big one, look at it there, it became on this side here. And now for the poor, became on the other side, yeah. You can see that in the next model, yeah. You see these houses? These are the houses of the wives of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
the houses with the wives were attached to the masjid. Each house had two doors, the front door to the masjid and the back door to the city. Okay? The houses with the wives were at the back of the masjid, but when the qibla changed, they became, you know, at the front, in line with the member of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can see that in the next model. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. See, the big one became next to the houses, and the one for the poor became on the other side. Okay? Any questions about this? You know, the first expansion was made by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we're going to cover the expansion. He made it 3,400 square meters and he removed this roof. See down for the poor? Umar bin al-Khattab took it out. Any idea why? You know why he took it out? No? Because there were no poor people at all. Yeah, they had already conquered Persia and Syria. They had a lot of money that was not needed at all. And that's why he removed it, subhanAllah. You know, they had also a lot of conquests. So they, he would send the Sahaba to go and teach people Islam. They're going and spread Islam. And that's why that was not needed at that time, subhanAllah. Al-Walid bin Abdul Malik. Walid bin Abdul Malik made it 6,400 square meters, you know, around 30 years after the death of Aisha radiallahu anha. So Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha died. 30 years later, Walid bin Abdul Malik made it this way. He made it 6,400 square meters. He made four minarets as well. That was new, you know, the buildings were pretty high. So they needed a higher building. So the modern can, you know, so modern can go up there and, you know, call people to salah, you know, as, you know, adhan. The red box here is Aisha's house. So this is the first expansion that included the houses of the wives in the masjid. You know, the houses of the wives were taken out. They became a part of the masjid. But Aisha's, because the grave of Nabi Wasallam is there. The house is still there, inshallah. It's under the green dome. Inshallah, we're, we're going to cover that next, inshallah. We're going to talk about the domes. These domes were made by the Mamluks, you know, the Egyptians. The Egyptians made all of these domes. These domes were made on purpose. No speakers, no mics. So the domes were like ecosystem. Okay? They also made the green dome. That was in 1481. The, the Mamluks made it silver. They used to call it the blue dome. Never been blue. They just used to call it that way. That way. The Turks or the Ottomans, they made it to green back in 1848, 170 years ago. Okay? They made it to green, and that's why we call it the Green Dome now. You know, the Ottomans made the masjid bigger, 10,000 square meters. And then back in the 50s, King Saud made it 16,000 square meters. That's it. The capacity was around 200,000 people. The biggest and the latest is this new shape here. This is the expansion of King Fahd. It started in 84, and it was completed in 94. So from 84 to 94, that's 10 years. The size of the masjid is 350,000 square meters and the capacity is 1 million. 1 million including the courtyard and the rooftop. Okay? The silver dome is over, you see the silver dome, that one? Yes. That's over the mihrab. You know mihrab? Yes. Where the imam stands to lead the salam. It's different from the mimbar. So that's over the mihrab. That is what they call it the imam dome or the dome of the imam. For the green dome, it's over the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. Inshallah, we'll see that. Any questions about that? Is it today now that they move back? They move back to pray. This dome is... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you. You know, in the Haram, we have three mihrabs. We have the mihrab of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This one is in the Rawda. It's in between the house of the Nabi and the Mimbar. Nabi said, between my house and my Mimbar Rawda, you know, a garden. A garden from the gardens of the Jannah. So, the mihrab of the Nabi is in between the house and the Mimbar. A few meters ahead, we have the mihrab of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan. That's the extension. Of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu. So the silver dome is over the mihrab of Sayyidina Uthman. Thank you, sir. The silver dome is over the mihrab of Sayyidina Uthman, not the mihrab of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the Imam does not use this one here. They use the mihrab of, the, he, used the, he uses the mihrab of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you like, the one which is in the road. Okay? In a, you know, ladies, you, you can't see that because of the white screen. Yeah. But many think, you've seen it already, right? The mihrab, that hollow thing, where the Imam stands to lead the salah. Because the masjid was not, sorry, the masjid, yeah. Is there anything about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with clothes or anything about from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any companion still remain now? Yeah, in Topkapi Palace. You know what? You know Topkapi Palace? It's in Istanbul. They have the turban of the Prophet, his shoes, his swords, his hair, everything. Even the garment of Fatima, some of the belongings of the Sahabas are there as well. And there are some it's like in Pakistan as well in the Bashi Mosque. That's what they're saying. To be honest, Allahi. Allah knows but I never heard that. But I know that everything is in Turkey. Itab Kapi Palace in Istanbul, very famous. Yeah. yeah. 
person here is Aisha's house. Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha had a room and a courtyard. So this is the room and this is the courtyard. This one here is the masjid. So the courtyard is, 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 in between, is between the masjid and the room. Okay? This one here is Hafsa's house. And this one here is for Fatima. So this is Fatima's house. The middle one is Aisha's. And that one is for Fatima. Uh, sorry, this is for Hafsa. So these three houses are now under the green dome. Okay? The green dome covers these three houses. Subhanallah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died in the courtyard, not in the room. Yeah, he died in the courtyard, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is where the Sahabas buried him in the courtyard. And he said, the prophets of Allah are buried where they die. That's why he's in the courtyard, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not in the room. For Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Bakr, they wanted to be buried next to him. That is why their graves are in the courtyard as well. Okay? Any question about that? So the graves are in the courtyard, not in the room. And subhanAllah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died in his bed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The bed in the, was in the courtyard. And subhanAllah, when Aisha Radulana was screaming about it, the people in the masjid here, they could hear that. You know, remember? The house was attached to the masjid. I told you that, right? So when, he, when she was screaming about it, the people in the masjid, the sahabas, they could hear that. And that was hard for them because they never expected it. The companions never thought that a Nabi would die. And that is why they were in a chaotic state. You know, some of the sahabas were in a state of disbelief, like Sayyidina Umar radiallahu You know, he drew his sword and he said, the hypocrites claim that the messenger of Allah has passed away. By Allah, he has not. He has gone to meet his Lord Allah. He will come back and he will kill those hypocrites, those who are making these claims. And then he said, whoever says the Nabi is dead, I will kill him or I will cut his head off. So that was Umar radiallahu the strongest from amongst the sahabas. What about the ones that had soft hearts, you know, the, the general companions? It is reported that Ali radiallahu anhu fell unconscious. Radiallahu. Uthman radiallahu anhu was motionless. He couldn't speak, he couldn't walk, he couldn't say anything. Uh, some of the sahabas said, we wish we had died, you know, before that. And subhanAllah, when Abu Bakr anhu got the news, he immediately said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajaun. You know, one thing you need to know about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was the closest companion to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was with him in childhood, sallallahu anhu. He was with the Nabi in every delicate moment, Uhud, Badr, the trench, everything. You know, in the Ghar, Ghar Thawr, even when the people rejected the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr was the one who supported him, you know. Um, so, you know, they say the closer the person, the more we feel. You know, the closer the person, the more we feel. So if the likes of Abu Bakr broke down, it would have been justified. Because he was very close to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But to be that patient and to have that faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that shows how strong he was, Radallahu Anhu. You know, when he got the news, he immediately said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. We belong to Allah and to Allah we will return. And then he made his way to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. So he got into the house first. And then he uncovered the Prophet's face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu kissed the forehead of Nabi and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you are beautiful in life and you are beautiful in death. Oh Ya Rasulullah, I would sacrifice my father and my mother for Ya Rasulullah. And then he radiallahu anhu got into the masjid. When he saw the Sahabat in that state, he knew that the Sahabas needed help. He knew that the death of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had done damage to the Sahabas. So he stood in the mimbar and he said, Oh people, did not Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala inform you that the Nabi was going to die? Did not Allah say, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَدْنِ قَبْلِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad is not but a messenger. And many other messengers have passed before him. If he dies or is killed, will he turn around on his heels? Will he leave Islam? Did not Allah say, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَيَقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul will taste death. And then he said, whoever worships Muhammad, let him know that Muhammad has passed away. And whoever worships Allah, let him know that Allah is ever living and never dies. And that's when the Sahabas realized that a Nabi had really passed away. You know, the Sahabas say there was no greater calamity. For all the things that suffered, that was the greatest calamity, the loss of a Nabi You know, some of the Sahabas couldn't tolerate like being here in Al-Madinah Munawwara. And that is why they left Al-Madinah Munawwara. You know, Bilal radiallahu anhu, when he was dying, sir radiallahu anhu, his wife said, what grief, like her, her husband is dying, wa, wa husna. No, her husband is dying. He said, Bal quli wa farha. you say what happiness, because tomorrow I will meet the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. You know, that the love that the Sahabas had for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were happy to die because they knew that they were going to see a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Sahabas washed the Nabi with his claws on, they shrouded him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then they performed Salat al-Janazah individually one person at a time. None of the Sahabas wanted to lead the Salah, subhanAllah. 
That's why they perform Salat al janaza one person at a time. And that took them days. And Nabi died on Monday, but he was buried on Wednesday, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For Aisha, she didn't move out of the house. She used to sleep in the bed of a Nabi. Next is the grave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even after the death of Abu Bakr, she would do the same thing. But after the death of Umar, you know, Umar, you know the Sahabas were, were very respectful. You know, he came and said to Aisha, I want to be buried next to my companions, you know, the Prophet of Abu Bakr. She said, no problem. You can take it, no problem. And then, you know, right before he died, he, he went to his son and told him, after my death, go and ask her again. Maybe she was afraid of me. Maybe she didn't want to say that, to, you know, in front of me. Go and ask her. If she says no, just bury me in Baqiyah. So after the death of Umar Abdullah, subhanAllah, his son came and asked her and asked Aisha Radhala again, my father wants to be buried next to his companions. She said, no problem, he can't take that. He can take it. And subhanAllah, that's why his grave is next to the Prophet's grave and Abu Bakr's. For Aisha Radhala, she did not move out of the house of the Prophet. SubhanAllah, she made a, a black partition in between the graves and the bed because Umar was not related to her. And every time she wanted to go in there to see the graves or to say salam, she would go in with the hijab on. You know, she would put on the hijab first and then she would go in there. Because Umar Abdullah who is there, subhanAllah. You know, people say the body of the shaheed is dead, but the soul is there. And maybe that is why she used to put on the hijab every time she wanted to go in there, subhanAllah. Yeah. So subhanAllah, Aisha Radhullah had died. And 30 years after her death, nobody was there to take care of the house. And that is why the house of Aisha Radhullah had the roof caved in on the graves, you know? The roof came down, came down. You can see that in front of you, sir. Yeah, so the roof came down. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz rebuilt it. Now, let me show you the changes that Umar Abdullah and home made, inshallah. Any question about this? Uh, when you stand before the big, the, big, the big hole, you are in line with the face of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So that is why you should stand before that hole when you say salam to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Bakr's grave is further down from the Prophet's shoulder all the way down. So when you stand before the, the, the second one, you will be in line with the face, with the face of Abu Bakr Radhiallahu Because his grave is further down from the Prophet's shoulder all the way down. And Umar's grave is from Abu Bakr's shoulder all the way down. So when you stand before the third one, you will be facing the face of Umar Radhiallahu Anhu. Yeah, all of them, all of them are in the middle gate. Yeah, all of them. But the, 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 the whole. one behind one, like for yeah, yeah, the behind each other. Abu Bakr, he's had, he's here. Abu Bakr, no, no, no. Abu Bakr, you know, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is this way. Okay. Abu Bakr's grave is further down. He's, 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 his head is from the shoulder of Nabi all the way down. And Umar's grave, Abu Bakr's shoulder all the way down. That's when you stand before the yeah. big circle. You will be aligned with the with his face. Yeah, his face, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then Abu Bakr's and then Umar's. You know, they are behind each other, but shoulder to shoulder. Okay. Yeah. You see, you just take one step back because I want to see this model here. These two. Okay, can you see these two models? See the middle one here? You see the red light, sir? The red light. On that side. Yeah. This is Aisha's house, the middle one. This is Hafsa's, and this was for Fatima, the Prophet's daughter. So, as I said, the roof of the house of Aisha of the Lanha caved in, you know? The roof came down. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz rebuilt it. Umar bin Abdul Aziz made three changes. The first thing he did, he combined the room with the courtyard. You see, they became like one chamber. And then he took out Hafsa's house and Fatma's. So these two houses, houses were taken out. And then he made a five-sided wall around Aisha's house. He didn't make it a four-sided wall like the Kaaba because he was afraid that the people might have the concept of doing a wall for around it. You know, he wanted to make it different than the Kaaba. That is why he made it a pentagon, not a square. And as you see, the pentagon doesn't have any doors. It doesn't have any windows. Do you see any? Nothing. So nobody gets in there. Not even for cleaning, not even for maintenance. That is why all the pictures of the grave of Nabi are fake. Thank you. Nobody gets in there. Some people, you know, had tried to dig in. That is when Nur al-Din Zinke came and made a ditch around the holy chamber. The ditch is very deep. Yeah, I heard it's around 20 meters deep. Allah knows best. It's very deep. You know, Nur al-Din Zinke made it and he filled it up with melted iron and lead. So you can't, you know, people can't dig in now. And on the ground they have this five-sided wall. That is where all the pictures are fake. fake. Yeah, the, gra the, the, the graves are completely sealed. If you want to go in there, you have to break down the wall. That's it, yeah. <laughs> no other options. Okay? Any questions about that? 
Subhanallah, a Zahir be birth. Can you see that, that model there? Okay, yeah, now this group. Yes, move back. Ladies, can you see that one? Can you see it, ma'am? You people, can you see that? A Zahir be birth made another wall around the five sided wall. The exterior wall was made to protect the five sided wall. Ten years later, Muhammad Qalawana Salih he made a small dome on top. You see the small dome? He made it to signify the holy chamber. Okay? That's how it is today. You ladies come from that side. You see that side? You see that? You see the, the red light? That, this is the roda. Men from here. These are the golden gates. See the three gates, right? So these are the gates. When men look through the mesh, you know the golden mesh, when you look through, you see the five sided wall. And because it's covered by a green curtain, people think it's the grave of Nabi. There's something like a kiswa or a curtain, you know, over the five sided wall. That's why people think it's the grave of Nabi. But actually, it's not. The graves are behind the wall. We only see the curtain that covers the five sided wall. And then, Allah Shaf Qaytabai made a bigger dome on top of the small dome. And that's the green dome. So actually, there are two domes on top of each other the silver dome, the small one. And on top of it, we have the green dome. The silver dome is over the graves. But for the green dome, it's over the whole thing. The five sided, everything is under the green dome. Okay? That's how it is today. Any questions about that? So from this to that. Yes. See the difference? But, but, but there is two domes. There is one silver, one... No, no, no. I'm not talking about the one that... Oh, yeah, yeah, th yeah, that that's visible. We can see it. Okay, okay. The silver dome, the one, you know, we have... There is a silver dome. It's visible. We can see it. But this one is not. This is yeah, under the green dome. It's a cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover, it's, it's, yeah, by the green. The one you can see is the imam. Dome. Yes. Yeah, that's different. Right? How is it? It's good? So Samia, tell me, how does it taste? Oh, okay. It's like Okay, okay. All right, okay. The rose water, right? This, do you like? This is a tradition from uh, uh, Turks. They and how does it taste? I don't taste yet, but I'm oh. telling you. <laughs> this is a tradition from them, actually. Yummy. Yummy? 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 That's good. Oh, just talk about it. Alright, guys. Check it out. Check it out. Okay, listen. Hmm. They used to call this Sherbat. Yes. Is it, is it? Okay. Do you understand about that prophet's grave thing? Do you want me to explain to you about that? Sure, I do. Okay, ha. Assalamu alaikum. So, now I was going to tell you that 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 so, a moment, we were saying that we were going to go to the end of the end. No, as you can see, the first one is the one that 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 is He's on his He's on his right shoulder facing right Kaaba. Right shoulder so facing Kaaba. You're actually seeing his face. Yes. And the ladies are seeing all of the three heads. All of the three heads. Okay, nobody...
قبر قبر مارک ہے تو لوگ سمجھتے ہیں جو تصویریں انٹرنیٹ پہ دیکھنے کو ملتی ہیں لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ نبی پاک کی قبر کی تصویریں ایسا کچھ بھی نہیں ہے کوئی نہیں جا سکتا آج تک کوئی گیا نہیں ہے کچھ بھی نہیں ہے اس میں لوگ سمجھتے ہیں کہ شاید قبر ہے بہت سی انٹرنیٹ پہ تصویریں بھی آتی ہیں لوگوں کو لگتا ہے کہ یہ نبی پاک کی قبر مبارک کی تصویر ہے وہ جو کہ بالکل بھی ایسا نہیں ہے تو اگر آپ کی سارے ماڈلس دیکھو تو آپ کو اندازہ ہو جائے گا کہ یہ اس میں تو کوئی کوئی دروازے نہیں ہے نہ کوئی کھڑکی ہے تو کوئی بھی نہیں آج تک جا سکے اندر خاص کر کے کوئی کلیم بھی نہ کرے کہ میں میں اور اس کی شیپ اچھا اور یہ جو شیپ کی کیا وجہ کیا نان آپ کو پتا اس کی وجہ کیا اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ جب یہ بنایا گیا تھا یہ کالے پتھر سے ہی بنایا گیا تھا اور اس کا مقصد یہ تھا لوگ ایسے نہ ہو کہ ادھر آباد ہاں سب تو اس لیے اس کی شیپ ہاں جی آپ لوگ یہاں پہ کیا کر رہے ہیں وٹ آر یو گائز ڈو نو وہی زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو پوائنٹ They don't stop, huh? They don't stop for nobody. This is all this cross road here in Saudi Arabia. That's right. Yeah. All right, so we go for uh, prayers directly? Yeah. Let's go for prayers directly. Let's go for prayers directly. 